Attention, police militaire à vos postes. All military police are instructed to be on the lookout for two escape prisoners. Paul Brissac, the notorious Parisian criminal, and a Japanese murderer named Ito Masuka. These men are highly dangerous and are reported to be heading through the jungle in the general direction of Cayenne. <laughs> Get me out of here. I think in Ito better go in front. We can't last much longer. I lead in you to river, same like promise. Yeah, but they're gaining on us. I told you we wouldn't have a chance without weapons. I keeping a up sleeve. Come. Shooting you? Longer. One more day on the river, two more days around coast. Shooting you? Three days. Not so bad, Edo. We're going to Kyle at night, I'll get the money, then find the freighter. There's a Portuguese tramp over there sailing tonight. And with plenty cash, you're arranging passage with Captain for both of us? You're getting another ship. Oh. taking two passengers. Well, it's much trouble for me, senor, but I'll take you and your friend to Lisbon for 20,000 francs in advance. And you furnish other clothes, remember? See, si, see, si, other clothes, certainly. And when we land, you find me a ship for London, understand? See, si, senor, give me the money. Here, and don't try to pull anything. Oh, please, senor, I'm a man of honor. I too wanting ship for London, please. Not in the bargain. I'm taking you as far as Lisbon and no farther. Oh, yes, you needing first class house for in London. Find one there. Not Rakito. Cleaning immense, cooking pretentious, cocktails supreme. Suiting you? Mr. Romero? Are you Mr. Higgins by any chance? That's me. Higgins and Ransbottom, Higgins and Ransbottom. Who's your friend? My servant, Ito. Are you sure he's all right? I don't know them foreigners. Sly, that's what I call them. You can't trust them. You can trust him. He was in the room next to me in that French hotel. We okay. checked out together. Oh. Uh, uh, well, we'd better see you through the immigration. Right. Next. Oh, I see you have a diplomatic visa, Mr. Romero. You may pass right through. No need for luggage inspection. Thank you. You're welcome. Next. Please. Your name. Saying please. Your name, your name. Don't you know your own name? Oh, so sorry. Ito Takao, a Japanese fellow. This is my servant. He speaks very little English, but you'll find his papers in order. Oh, uh, just a matter of routine, Mr. Romero. Uh. Next. Thank you. Did our branch manager make any arrangements for me? Yes, he told me to find you a nice, quiet place. Expense, no object. Did you? I did, and I hope you like the place, Mr. Romero. 
Here's the address. Suiting you? Morning, Ito. Governor Ito. Good morning, sir. Mr. Ramirez expecting you. Hello, Mr. Romero. How are you? Oh. I've always wanted the honor of meeting Mr. Lipmar. You're very kind, Mr. Romero. Please make yourself comfortable. Thank you. I picked this item away myself, Mr. Lipmar. Can I offer you anything? No, 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 thanks. Take my advice, Mr. Lipmar. Have one of Ito's specials. Uh, what do you call them, Ito? Uh, naming same Memories of St. Joseph. <laughs> my own composition. Three of them, Ito, and quick about it. Yes, you're making great haste. Where'd you get the fancy moniker? I never knew them heathens was religious. Edo St. Joseph is a prison with windowless cells some distance from here. You seem to have the utmost confidence in this servant of yours. Oh, Edo's all right. As soon as you get used to his face. He's one of us, he is. He was the one what got Mr. Ramirez. I know. We can't be too careful. As you realize, we have important business to discuss. I took the liberty of telling him a little about the job, Mr. Lipman. You talk too much, Higgins. You've probably heard of our last commission. French minister in Belgrade. Met with an unfortunate accident. A friend of mine has replaced him. Thank you. Learning to make spaces very quick. Oh, first one today. It out. It's A1. Right off the top. Thank you, thank you. How do you like it, Mr. Littmore? I can't quite make up my mind whether or not it's too bizarre for my taste. I think in your act more better when getting used to it. Mr. Romero, your servant is invaluable. I hope you don't overwork him. Ito, do you know what day this is? Thinking Tuesday, sir. Right. It's your day off and it starts now. That being our anchor. Leave the door open, please. Shooting you? And now to business. Your first assignment is connected with Anton Darbeck. You've probably heard of him? Darbeck, the steel king of Prague? That's right. He's in London now, staying at the Park Lane Hotel. Another cable to Leder at the Prague office. Returning end of month, stop. Take no action concerning Weiss steel merger. Regards. Hello. Yes, this is Mr. Darbeck's secretary. I want to speak to Mr. Darbeck, himself. Never mind who. Put him on the wire. You can't speak to Mr. Yeah, Darbeck unless... But you can't speak oh, to give these... Give it to me. Yes, this is Anton Darbeck speaking. Who is this? I got a message for you, Mr. Darbeck. And the people who sent it say as though it's important. Well, what is it? You haven't paid any heed to what they've been telling you. But now they mean it's business. You've got till three o'clock tomorrow. They says to get in touch with our agent like they told you before three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, or that's the end of you. Well, that's a little drastic, isn't it? And to show you they means what they says, they're going to prove it to you this afternoon. May I ask exactly how this proof is going to be provided? Oh, you'll recognize it. They says this is their last warning. Please connect me with the chief operator. Yes, sir, hold on. Hello, is this the chief operator? Oh, I'm speaking for Mr. Anton Darbeck at the Park Lane Hotel. Mr. Darbeck just received a call which he's very anxious to trace. Could you... Oh, I see. Well, if you can't, you can't. I say, what's the fellow to do to get into this place? He's a battering ram. Why the photograph? What's the matter, been pining for me? Oh, be quiet. <laughs> What was that telephone call? Oh, just an art dealer trying to sell me a go -gun. Please don't lie. It was another one of those threats. How did you know? I was listening, of course. Oh. Please, you must do something about it. Will you stop that and answer me? I say, how does a chap get some attention around here? Hello, David. I'm glad to see you. 
It isn't possible, is it, that I'm not welcome? There seems to be an awful lot of atmosphere in here. Yes, you're right about that. You have to help me to soothe her, too, or she'll be resigning. Then what'll happen to Darvax Steel? <laughs> oh, don't be funny. Oh, this all makes my day very much brighter. I thought I was the only one Anne treated badly. What's the matter? He's in danger, and all he'll do about it is laugh and play Chopin. I don't want to discuss it. Somebody's been threatening his life. It started in Prague two months ago. He's had several letters. Threatening his life? Well, why should anyone want to kill Anton? Now, do we have to go into all this? It's all because he refuses to part with the formula for the new steel. I know it is. The first threat came just after he convinced the armament people he'd never sell to them. Since then, he's been hounded in Berlin, Paris, and now here in London. Hmm. What do they say exactly? That if he doesn't change his mind before 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, they're going to kill him. But, my dear girl, one can't rush around London killing people. It simply isn't done. Now, look here, David. Don't take it too seriously. Oh, did you get those theater tickets for tonight? Yes. Listen to me. We've got to make him do something. Well, you'll have to forgive me. Perhaps you'll join me in the office, Miss Richmond, when you feel equal to taking a few more cables. Please, wait a minute. I have a suggestion to make. If you get the warning, will you promise to go to the police? Now, look, when you've worked for me a little longer, you'll realize that I live on a perfect diet of threats. If I were to take him too seriously, I'd spend the rest of my life in an armored dugout. Now, don't be a silly girl. Look, David, this is serious. I feel it. What can we do? Well, of course, if you really believe this fantastic tale, what he should do is tell them about it at Scotland Yard. And what might you be wanting? I should like an interview with uh, Sir Charles Murchison, please. Oh, you would, would you? Well, I tell you, I got a sort of notion that Sir Charles might be busy. As head of the CID, Sir Charles must find his work most arduous. But perhaps you might interrupt him to bring him this. Oh, I'll send it in. Now, you wait just here. I feel sure that Sir Charles will be out himself to welcome you. Excuse me, sir, seeing as how you're a foreigner, I'd like to give you a bit of an hint. If you think you're going to see anyone in there, you're very much mistaken. Oh, so? You'll find out. I've been here myself since half past a quarter to from, and my business is important. A met of crime? How right you are, sir. Truly sinister character. Mr. Motto? And what do you think it was she had in her hand? A spade. A spade? This way, Mr. Motto. Then Sir Charles isn't so busy after all. How are you, Mr. Motto? I'm always happy to see you, Sir Charles. Thank you. Sit down, won't you? Oh, I see you have an addition to your murderer's row. On the left there? Oh, you mean Leonelli, the Primrose Hill poisoner. Perhaps you would like a new and important one to fill that bare space? Well, we shall find one soon enough. I think I could supply the necessary subject. Oh, so this is an official visit. In accordance with regulations, I am reporting my presence in London. Really? On what case? Oh, in connection with the organization which some newspapers so picturesquely named the League of Assassins. Do you know, Murdo? Although I've been informed there is such a ring in Europe, sometimes I find it awfully hard to believe. It is often under the strangest guise that one finds truth. But it seems so incredible. An organization which offers murder for sale. Why, it's a lucrative business, and perhaps it supplies a long-felt want, don't you think? What assistance can we give you? Uh, none at the moment, but uh, when the time arrives, I shall be grateful for your help. You're a strange person, Moto, always playing a lone hand. What makes you associate these continental criminals with London? Do you know the name Paul Prisak? Prisak? Oh, you mean the man who escaped from Devil's Island a couple of months ago? Exactly. And you may remember that the Japanese was with him? Do you mean to tell me that... So that's what you've been up to? You see, uh, Monsieur Prisak was one of the original members of the League before it attained its present startling proportions. So I arranged to be his fellow prisoner. And so you escaped with him, hoping that he would lead you to their rogues gallery. Moto, you're a genius. A very uncomfortable status. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that these criminals are operating here in London? Yes. And already I know most of them. 
But I have yet to discover the identity of their leader. Well, what are the names of the ones you know? We'll have them picked up at once. Not yet, Sir Charles. That would lessen my chances of catching their chief executive. But look here, Moto. You can't come to Scotland Yard and tell us there's a nest of murderers in London and then not tell us where to find them. I must insist on further information. Your own slogan, Sir Charles? Oh, well, have it your own way. I suppose you'll tell us in your own good time. When the moment arrives, we'll trap a whole cage of monkeys. I must be going now. I have much to do. Well, good luck. Thank you. And drop in again when you have some more news. Good chance. Murray, a Japanese has just left my office. Mr. Moto of the International Police. Put two of your best men on him. Find out where he lives and report to me at six. Yes, sir. Any of you men know Mr. Moto on sight? I do, sir. Good. Take Stevens and get after him at once. Oh, extra! In all I have to humble disclosures in my first scandal. Paper, Governor. Stand it, if you please. Stand it, sir. Right there. Thank you, sir. Hello, Sergeant. You want your paper? Oh, extra! Extra! Oh, extra! Extra! I'm so very sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. The Honourable do it in the main first scandal. Who extra? Who extra? Drive me to Soho. I shall tell you when to stop. We work separate. Follow him. Follow that cab, please. Extra, all about the Mayfair scandal. Who is he anyway? Shall we go there? Forgive the intrusion. Could you spare the time to drive me to Limehouse Causeway? No, I must. That's a mighty long way, Governor. Oh, yes, but I shall pay. Better than a horse, perhaps. Scottish priest and soda. Two and six. Being very expensive, sir. Special price to you. Special whiskey. Also. <laughs> <laughs> If I sit down. Thank you. That's a violet. No, thanking you, thanking you. Aye, look, he's Nibs is making up to the mystery lady. Not making much headway, neither. Hoping no objections, I refer in grass. You're very persistent. Yes, thank you. Sherry, I thinking? Yes, Sherry, please. Two and six. Of course, sir. <laughs> sorry, please. Why don't you look where you're going? Very sorry, sir. And keep a civil tongue in your head. Yes, sir. Another grass, Sherry, please. Three and six. Saying, please? An extra bob for the glass. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. We don't want your sword around here. 
Any more of your lip, and I'll knock seven bells out of you. Shut your face. I apologize, priest, having no experience dealing with vibrant types. How unfortunate for you. Thank you. Could I have another pink gin, Governor? Here's a tune, Sam. Blimey. Take a dicker with that. going out with her. What's she doing around here? That's what I'd like to know. The lady pays the rent and she don't bother me. You shut your face. I'm afraid it took a long time to get up here. Excellently staged, Lotus. What was the name of that belligerent individual at the bar? They call him Sniffy. Descriptive, though, far from subtle. He works for the man Higgins you told me to watch. Also, did you study of Mr. Higgins' proof enlightening? A little. He's in the same business in which I'm pretending to be. Please proceed with extreme caution. Mr. Higgins is concerned with far greater interest than the smuggling of contraband. He has been extremely secretive whenever I've tried to draw him out. Small wonder. Mr. Higgins is a member of the League of Assassins. Here you are. No, uh... Hello. Where's Sniffy? He's out. Want anything? Find him. I'll be wanting four men. Right. When? Straight away. Send him into the parlor. All right. Uh, scotch? Oh, I don't mind if I do. You know, warms the cockles to the old lot. <laughs> uh, where's Miss Leo? She's not here. Oh. Well, <laughs> here's the flags of all nations. <laughs> There's one thing far more important than the name of their leader at this moment, and that is the reason for this concentration in London. Thank you. Then you believe they are here on their usual business? Yes, of course. Unfortunately, Monsieur Litma is very suspicious of me, and he manages to be the soul of discretion regarding his plans. Couldn't you set up dictaphones in Brizak's flat? Lotus, these men are far too clever to be trapped by mechanical devices. I must resort to some basic trick, something so elemental that it'll slide under Monsieur Litma's sophistication. I wonder if that had anything to do with it. I don't understand. Perhaps it's nothing at all. But this morning, I happened over here Sniffy telephone someone at the Park Lane Hotel. Also? I only heard the name of the man he asked for. Then he closed the booth door. It was a strange name. Darvak. Darvak? The Czechoslovakian steelman in London? He may be the answer. I'll call upon Monsieur Darvak this afternoon. Sent for the ambulance? And my boy Irvin went. Oh, well, now, who saw it happen? I had it on him, but he was there. What at that time? I seen it towards the man's own porch. That's right. He didn't even look behind him. He walked right into the light. 
sorry. I had me eye on him at the time. He pays no mind and walks right to his death. It's right what these people say, Constable. Uh, uh, how could I help it? Well, it seems quite clear that the unfortunate gent has nobody to blame but himself. Now, just give me your names and addresses. My name is John Hawkins. Well, what's your name? Proceed, please. Well, what's keeping Guilford? He's usually so punctual. He'll be here in a minute. Have some tea. Well, I want his advice on this car no. I think I should buy it. Oh, there he is now. Please don't go. Don't be ridiculous, Ed. Are you Mr. Anton Darvak? Yes, well, what is it you want? Excuse me, please. Tell him to go. Well, you seem to have some business with me. Perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me what it is. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Moto, and uh, my business is partially explained by this. Hmm. Well, I've heard of you, of course, Mr. Moto, but I can't see what possible business you can have with me. Perhaps Mr. Moto Perhaps is here. Perhaps the lady would have been right. I'm here to offer you any assistance within my power against uh, certain persons who have been threatening your life. You see, it is serious. I appreciate your good intentions, Mr. Moto, but um, I don't require any assistance, thank you, because I've received no threats of any kind. You are quite certain no incident, perhaps, has uh, slipped your memory? None, Mr. Moto. Well, is there any other matter you'd like to discuss? Oh, no, certainly nothing, if uh, you are positive. Will you please accept my apologies for having intruded? May I ask one question? Certainly, please. Why did you think Mr. Darvak's life had been threatened? Oh, that, as your Mr. Kipling says, is another story. Good day. Have I made a mistake? Oh, hello, David. Come in. Oh. Do I know you? Uh, this is Mr. Moto of the International Police, Mr. Scott Frencham, who's been handling some business for me in London. What priceless luck. You look exactly as I've always imagined you. You know, I've been a fan of Mr. Moto's for years. You are very kind. I'm gasping for a drink. Anybody join me? Perhaps Mr. Moto would like one. Yes, of course it would. Come on, Aunt Holmes, the world's best host. Thank you. Scars and soda? No, thanks. Oh. Would you like some tea, then? Yes, please. Forgive me, please, but it isn't very often that one has the opportunity of seeing a genuine Garneau. Oh, you think it's authentic? Oh, there's no doubt. The technique and treatment are definitely his. You've discovered Anton's weak point, Mr. Molto. One dash of Garneau makes the whole world kin. <laughs> you know, I think in time, Garneau will eclipse Picasso. It is so very refreshing to meet a fellow enthusiast. I've admired Garneau for a great many years. Oh, in that case, you'll be interested in this. They're holding an exhibition tomorrow at the uh, Coventry Galleries. Lots of fine moderns, including Garneau. Oh, I certainly shall not miss it. Oh, and you'll be interested to meet Lord Guilford, too. He should be here any minute now. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Darvak speaking. Who is it? I have some bad news for you, Monsieur Darvac. Your friend Lord Guilford has met with a serious accident. Is he badly hurt? He's dead. Knocked down by a lorry in Tweed Street Market. He died instantly. Is this true? But who is this speaking? But I insist on knowing who you are. That's of no importance, Monsieur Darvac, but Lord Guilford is unfortunately deceased, as you will see from the evening papers. The main point is that his death is a warning which we promised we would issue today. I hope this will convince you that it would be wise for you to part with your steel formula before it's too late. Hello. Hello. They tell me that poor old Guilford's been killed, run over in Tweed Street Market. Oh, so? That is indeed unfortunate. Oh, I say, what rotten luck. Nice old boy, too. So Lord Guilford's death was their warning. Now will you tell Mr. Moto? Yes, I think you're right. Look, I didn't tell you the truth just now. I have been receiving threats. As a matter of fact, I've had menacing demands of one form or another all my life. Yes, but uh, these threats you are speaking of, uh, they concern a specific matter? Yes, this morning I was told that I'd receive a final warning today. Now, poor Guilford's been killed. M most interesting. Please go on. Excuse me, sir, is this thing engaged? No. Thank you. You telephone? Yes. What were his reactions? Only one. Anger. I never heard anyone less afraid. Your order, sir? Bring me some china tea and a little toast. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I don't think he'll come round. I've spoken with our superior. Would he be absolutely sure that everything is ready for tomorrow? 
You think our man will apply for police protection? No. He's a genuine pacifist. He won't risk any publicity for his new steel process. I'll see you tonight at your flat. And that's why I refuse to be intimidated. I will not be a party to the facilitating of war. There should be more men who think as you do. Oh, can't we stop being altruistic? These people have said they'll kill you unless you change your mind by 3 o'clock tomorrow. She's right, Anton. Absolutely right. Either sell this formula to the munitions syndicate or come along with me to the yard. If the CID can't look after you, nobody can. England has the best police force in the world. Am I right, Mr. Molto? Oh, assuredly. You certainly can do no better than place yourself in the hands of Sir Charles Murchison. Well, I'll think it over. I must go now. Thank you for your hospitality. Delighted. It was a great pleasure to meet you, and uh, please insist that Mr. Dalek follow your admirable advice. Good day. Cheerio, Mr. Moto. You must have lunch with me one day at my club. Please take his advice and go with David. This very minute, old boy. You two seem to think that truth is more melodramatic than fiction, but it never is. Don't you realize that these people mean what they say? They've already killed a friend of yours, murdered him just to show you. My dear, you've obviously been reading cheap detective stories. If you'd only read better ones, you'd realize that these people are using a perfectly legitimate street accident just to frighten me. Don't you believe Guilford's dead? Of course I do, but I also believe that he was killed by a real accident. And these people are just using that as their melodramatic warning. You know, Anne, perhaps there's something in what he says. No, David. He's clever and I'm not. What he says sounds true, but it isn't. I know it isn't. All right. Well, then here's another twist. Supposing we find that in chapter 19, our visitor wasn't Mr. Moto at all. After all, we've only heard of him. None of us have ever seen him. Why, well, the man who left here just now might easily be one of the people who seem to be so thirsty for my life. By Jove, it's possible. I think I'll find out at once. looking for you all day. That's very nice of you. You know, you shouldn't hide yourself from me. You and I ought to get together more, more chummy like, see? <laughs> here. Wait here, wait here. Oh, let's have a little bit of service here. She was a parson's daughter, driving daily through the park. Though she's made a wealthy marriage, still she eyes ever open. Well, here's the flags of all nations, and to your bright eyes. You won't never regret coming in with me. <laughs> Won't you tell me more about these other connections of yours? All in good time, don't you worry. You string along with me, and you'll be in big business, see? I'm very much interested. Tell you what, why can't we go somewhere more private like? Don't you think we are less conspicuous here? Besides, I should like another drink. Oh. Drinking champagne. Monk speaking. He's with that Eurasian girl now, and talking considerably. Yeah. I think it can be arranged. I am the rich as all the pleasures. No, I can't pretend. That's all right, my dear. Accidents will happen. Plenty more where that comes from. Oh, 
Cognac. Cordon Rouge Grand Bisquet, five star. One brandy. Isn't this exciting? But local color. Get out of here. Let me finish my drink. I'll go and get a breath of fresh air. Take it easy. Don't you like it? No. to attend my own business. Yeah? But all this. This, assuredly. Come, there's no time. Blimey, what's been going on in here? Hey, where's the landlord? Right here. Who's responsible for all this? And what do you want? Well, it's... That always strike me, Pete. Well, it's I ask you. Pack only what you need. You must not return to this place. Higgins was killed because he confided in you. Look. It's gone. I thought so. The river, you know, is conveniently close. We must find another way out. Well, there's, there's nothing of any consequence here. I'm going home in a few minutes, Sanders. Don't disturb me unless it's something very important. Very good, sir. Murray, you're aware that your failure to find Moto makes our search for these criminals twice as difficult? Give me a few more hours, sir. I've got three men checking on the recent entries to the country. All I've got to say is this. Get Breesack and his confederates quickly. We cannot tolerate men like this loose in London. Whatever scheme Mr. Moto has up his oriental sleeve. Yes, sir. And bring Moto in, too. He's got to tell us what he's up to.
Softly, softly, catchy monkey. I cannot wait much longer. Tell him when he comes in, the arrangements are complete. Complete to the last little detail. Here he is. You were wondering what delayed you. Has your servant returned? Not yet. Good evening, Herr Brujo. Uh, <clears throat> Sit down for a second. First, I regret to tell you that Mr. Higgins has resigned from our organization. That's good. And in that connection, Brissack, I have other information for you. Before his resignation, Mr. Higgins was talking to a young woman who enjoys the confidence of your servant. Ito, cannot we discuss my business so I can go? This concerns all of us vitally. I've just found out that your servant is Mr. Moto of the International Police. That's impossible. Why, my boy Zito Matsuka. He was convicted of manslaughter in Saigon and sent to Devil's Island, where we escaped together. No doubt Moto arranged to be imprisoned with you in order that he might win your confidence. You're sure someone isn't making a fool mistake? I do not make mistakes. Why, that... If he shows up here again, I'll break his neck. You'll do nothing of the sort. When Mr. Moto returns tonight, as he will, we will pretend to suspect nothing. However, you will require some fruit, which he'll be instructed to purchase from a shop in Gladstone Street, which is open all night. When he reaches Gladstone Street, he'll find matters arranged for him. You think of everything. Quiet. Oh, good evening, please. Well, Ito, you're back. I was beginning to think you decided to leave my service. Oh, no, I'm not leaving good job. Very interesting for a Japanese pharaoh. That's right, Ido. You know what's good for you. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, wanting anything? I think not. Then respectfully bidding good night to you and other gentlemen. I guess it's too late for the fruit, eh, Romero? Oh, Ito, Mr. Litmar has promised to make us one of his famous brandy cups, but we'll need some fruit. Would you mind running out and get us some, uh... What was it you wanted? A dozen peaches, half a dozen tangerines, and a pound of black grapes. Understand, Ito? Oh, yes, sir. Excuse, please. Uh, I need in cash. I just paid you yesterday. Oh, yes, but I have a very expensive holiday today. Ito, you should let the women alone. Uh, yes, sir, but I find a very special girl in Rymouth. Here you are, and hurry back. Thank you, I'm making great haste. Oh, Ito, you'll find a shop open in Gladstone Street. Gladstone Street, I remember it, I remember it. Taxi, Governor? Perhaps, yes. Keep your hands out of your pockets and get in. Gentlemen, please, I don't understand. Get inside and be quick about it.
we got it. It's a blind alley. Well, spread out. But don't shoot unless you have to. Watkins talks me into taking his duty tonight, and I've been answers eight act Emma. Well, the dainties nips Mr. Motto. Good evening. Good morning to you, sir. I should like an interview with uh, Sir Charles Murchison, please. Well, I'm afraid he ain't in, sir. Big Ben just struck two o'clock. And what time do you expect him? Oh, anywhere between nine and ten. Then I'll wait. Good night. Well, everything is in order. It is for our purpose, but it's also a good exhibition. You shall observe how well everything has been arranged. You see, over there is the Garneau, which Darvak will wish to buy. One has to stand where we are to see it properly. The light is so placed. Well, I hope I hear the right signal when Darvak stands on this spot. Remember, I can't see from up there. Don't be a fool, Brissac. Now, gentlemen, if you don't mind, we'll talk over here. The orchestra on a direct cue from Herr Brucho will play the necessary music. But I don't know, Darvak. How can I give the signal? Gentlemen, your stupid worries don't flatter me. This has been carefully planned. I will explain in detail, Herr Brucho. A man will be waiting here where I am now, admiring that picture. When Monsieur Darvak enters, this man will greet him, addressing him loudly by name. When he has maneuvered Monsieur Darvak to a position underneath that chandelier, give your signal to the orchestra. Now, Brissac, as soon as you've heard the first few bars of the tune, cut your chandelier loose. Simple, is it not? Another accident, as our witnesses can prove. Now, is there anything you don't understand? Who is going to address Tarvak by name? You? No. I've had orders not to be here this afternoon. What will he look like, the man who identifies Tarvak? Well, if I were to describe him to you, you might make a mistake. One never knows how he will appear. And we're not to know who he is? Perhaps this will surprise you. He's to be our superior. Now, you have your orders. See that you carry them out. Oh, yes, by the way, our men picked up Mr. Moto's trail this morning. I don't think he'll bother us very long. Oh, but this is absurd. It's bound to be somewhere here. Here it is. I put it in my desk. Did you want me to miss seeing the exhibition? Are you actually going to be so foolhardy as to go out this afternoon? <laughs> Nothing can happen in a place like that. Why, well, it's the safest thing for me to leave the hotel. Oh, why did I have to fall in love with such a fool? Is that you said? I said you were a fool, a reckless fool. No, but you said something else first. Did you mean that? Of course I did. If you weren't such a fool, you'd have known it months ago. <laughs> yes, you must be right. I never even dreamt... You don't have to make polite excuses. I've said it, and now forget it. Forget it? Do you think I'm likely to forget a thing I never even hoped to hear? Mr. Moto, come in. Thank you. By the very person I'd hoped to see. I have an apology to make to you, Mr. Moto. Oh, so? When you came here yesterday, I'm afraid I doubted you. <laughs> you suspected, perhaps, that I was a member of that murder ring? <laughs> yes, and what's more, he had us all thinking there might be something in it. And how did you discover, please, that I was really only what I claimed to be? Well, we didn't. It was David Scott Frencham. He knows somebody at Scotland Yard and found out all about you from him. Oh, I see. Uh, but now that I enjoy your confidence, would you mind informing me of your plans? Concerning what? Must I remind you that three o'clock has been chosen as a, excuse the phrase, your deadline? Oh, how can you joke about it? Mr. Darvak insists on going to the exhibition this afternoon. Doesn't anyone bother to announce themselves? Allow me, please. By Jove, it's Mr. Moto again. Awfully glad to see you, sir. Awfully glad. May I return a compliment? If I'd known you were going to be here, I shouldn't have done what I have. 
Uh, do you mind? I've got to have a spot. Won't you come in, Mr. Murdo? Well, what have you done, David? You're not going to like it, Arnold. But if you won't look after yourself, you've got to be looked after. Oh, how? Well, I brought you a couple of protectors from Scotland Yard. Wherever you go, they'll go. Pretty snug, eh? Oh, thank you, David. All right. I'll accept your escort, provided you stop these ridiculous objections to my going out. Most sensible. Did not someone say the best way to avoid death is not to have too much aversion to it? Sounds like Schopenhauer. <laughs> you know, I was willing to bet a year's income that Arnton would turn up at that Garneau exhibition, threats or no threats. That's why I asked for the CID man. Yes. Yes, this is his secretary speaking. He's taking it all right. I thought he'd give me the devil. <laughs> well, yes, as a matter of fact, he is. Hold the line. This is for you, Mr. Moto. For me? Thank you. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Moto speaking. Your lady friend gave me a message. She needs help. Also, may I ask what happened to the young lady? They've got her, Mr. Moto. If you get back to the place she used to live, you might be able to save her. But you'll have to hurry. That'll fetch him. Will you please pardon my sudden departure? Why, oh, say, I hope it isn't bad news. Thanks. Here, what's your hurry? Is your name Moto? Yes, indeed. Uh, excuse me, I am in a hurry. Oh, no, you ain't, Mr. Moto. We're from Scotland Yard, and we've got orders to bring you in. Come on, let's get after him. Hold on. We've got another job to do. It must be a very important telephone call. Then I suppose men like Mr. Moto are pretty busy. Yes, even men like me. Well, I must toddle along to see a chap at the club. Aren't you coming to the exhibition? You bet I am, but I shall meet you there. Well, you won't be late, will you? Rather not. Cheerio, everyone. Well, you satisfied now I'm being well taken care of? promising gathering. Yes, indeed. Time's getting on. Did anyone come in who might be Darbuck? Not yet. Come here, einer von diesen Dreckskerlen hier sagen, für man für solche Zeug hier Geld verlangen kann, ha? This, this exhibition is an insult to the name of art, zum Kotzen. Wenn sie nicht gefällt, bitte gehen sie. What's he saying? He doesn't like the moderns. Just another of these old cranks. I'll call Simons. Good painters go hungry while this trash here transpires. Be quiet or I'll have you put out. You cannot put me out because I paid. What's the trouble, sir? Did this man pay admission? Yes. Yes, sir. Because I wanted to see the work of young men. Ich werde herumgehen. Vielleicht sehe ich was Besseres. Good. Aber seien Sie ruhig, sonst raus mit Ihnen. Here. That's all. But if he annoys anyone, throw him out. Yes. Oh, what feeling! And the richness of that amazing depth! What oh, chiaroscuro! Big pardon, I'm sure. That old German's a queer bird. I wonder if he could be the chief. But, my dear young lady, I don't quite understand it. When I saw Mr. Murdo this morning, he told me that he might need my assistance this afternoon, but I understood that he would come here himself. But he only just discovered the person who is the real leader. He had no time to come here. Please hurry. Mr. Darvac may be arriving at the gallery now. Well, we'll see what we can do. Murray, bring Litmai in. We picked him up at Waterloo Station. I'm holding him for questioning. You will find he was behind the murder of the French minister in Belgrade, to say nothing of other cases. Just how long do you intend to hold me here? I demand to telephone to my country's ambassador. You will be shown every usual consideration. In the meantime, I have some questions to put to you. I trust you realize I'm not the sort of person with whom you can trifle. Do you know who I am? Here, a glance at these should satisfy you, I imagine. I have urgent business on the continent, Sir Charles. I should not like to be obliged to sue you for false arrest. Keep him here until we've been to the Coventry galleries. Then you'll have your proof. All right. Murray, take him away. Come on now. You'll regret this. 
Well, I, I can only hope you're right, if you want. Don't you worry, miss. We'll be with him every minute. Any charge for these? No, sir. Compliments of the management. Very handsome of the management. Nice little show you have here. Thank you. I don't think so, but we shall see. Also, das ist das überhaupt scheußlichste, was ich in meinem ganzen Leben gesehen habe. Das ist ja das Gekrücken von einem verrückten Kind. Widerlichen. Ah, I gather you don't care for the painting. Painting? Das ist not a painting. Das ist ekelhaft, widerlich. Ein Kitsch. Really? I'd never have guessed it was as bad as all that. Look, <laughs> I saw you something. That is beautiful, huh? Yes, yes indeed. You like this? You can have it cheap. Well, thanks awfully, but I'm expecting some friends here. But I know you are a patron of the arts, Mr. Darvak. You're mistaking me for someone else. Leave me alone, will you? Oh, that's David now, isn't it? But I'm a good painter, Mr. Darvak. Please help me, Mr. Darvak. You're crazy. Get away from me. But, Mr. Darvak, you must not go away. Please help me, Mr. Darvak. But, Mr. Darvak... <laughs> He's dead. Mr. Moto. Yes? I took the liberty of pretending that Scott French was you, Monsieur Darvac. And saved my life at the expense of his. You must be insane. Oh, no, I don't think so. You see, your friend David happened to be the ringleader of the League of Assassins. <laughs> Remain quiet, please! Nobody to me! Don't move anyone! I'm Gottfried Buho. Hold on, my lad. Murray, did anybody get away? No, sir, but we haven't found the stairway to the loft. Well, investigate that chandelier chain as quickly as possible. Yes, sir. Come along. Get up there at once, will you? Oh, sir, Charles, sir. Your arrival is most opportune. This young lady was very persuasive. Well, Mr. Moto, I suppose I must congratulate you again. Uh, merely upon my good luck. <laughs> Suspecting that this gallery would be the setting for the attempt upon Mr. Davok, I took the liberty of exploring it this morning. This chandelier, obviously, was the most probable instrument for the accident to Monsieur Davok. While I was examining the loft, the conspirators were kind enough to corroborate my deductions by discussing their plans immediately beneath me. I'm only just beginning to realize how much I owe to Mr. Modo. But he told us something just now which I find very difficult to believe. Namely, that David Scott Frenchman was really a very dangerous criminal. Yes, it is quite a pill to swallow, isn't it? What made you suspect David? That was not difficult. You see, the brains of the organization knew all of Mr. Davok's movements. Yet, as I soon discovered, he only had few intimates. Yes, but when were you first certain? Only this afternoon. Our poor friend very thoughtfully provided you with two Scotland Yard officers to be a guard for you. When I left the hotel room, the endeavor to impede my progress and uh, in a subsequent contact, I discovered that they were carrying guns in shoulder holsters. Oh, you mean those two ruffians over there? Yes, uh, that is the pair. Now, men from Scotland Yard, as uh, Sir Charles will tell you, do not carry firearms. Mr. Moto's right. So, we now have the whole cage full of monkeys, which Mr. Moto promised us. Sir Charles, there is still one notable absentee. Oh, you mean Brissac. Oh, we'll... Get back! Prisoner, sir. May I use it? Decidedly. Uh, thank you, sir. Where's Mr. Moto? Mr. Moto's up there. Murray. 
Sorry, can't your men find their way up to the loft? We are looking for it, sir. Do you think your men have found their way up there yet? Oh, Sir Charles, will you please send up three men? They'll find a trap door above the ladies' retiring room. Have you got him? Yes, sir. Catchy monkey, but not so softly. Mm -hmm. 